Now our next design came in from Carol. That's Carol, our moderator. Carol took this photograph and as you can see the C is banded. This obviously is deep water. This is well, we'll take the, we'll take the highlights first. Sandy, close to the beach. Yeah, you can just see the breakers. Then we have a little dip, and that's what gives us this turquoise green. Then that little dip rises a little bit, which gives us that paler turquoise. Then it drops away. So if we looked at this sideways, it would probably run shallow, little dip, arise, another dip, arise and then suddenly drop away. And that's what gives us the banding. And Carol has used the fact that there is this banding to create her design. And there it is. And she's framed it. One of the things with using loose density fills is you do get sometimes things you don't want. So we'll look at this one. And I'll show you what I mean. Object details. Travel on edge. Now if I get rid of travel on edge, watch what happens. We get these. And the only way to cure those is to move the start and stop points. Now we've got one. What happens if we move that one down there? We get two. So what happens if I move the stop point up here? it's slightly more pronounced. So what if I put it... Oops! Sorry, Carol. What if I put it up there? Now I get one at both ends. So if I put it down here... No, still doesn't cure it. That doesn't cure it. Neither does that. Neither does that. So the only thing you can do is exactly what Carol did. And that is, tell it travel on edge. I'm not too bothered by whippy lines underneath loose fills when I'm doing a design. But in this particular design, because it isn't busy, whip lines show up. Now I'm looking at the sea, and Carol, I can't help noticing how uniform your curves are. Now obviously it's not wearing a corset, because it's a piece of embroidery. But this curve is echoed. This curve is echoed, so is this one. So I don't know how you did that. Well, I have a suspicion, but I don't know if I'm correct. But here, in the actual design, it gives you the sensation that you're on something which is in motion. And if we look at the stitch out, you still get that sensation. OK, so let's go and take a quick read of what Carol had to say, because there's a few points in here. Thank you for another interesting challenge. I admit that blending colours can seem a bit like a shot in the dark and when it works it's better than a solid colour. But then there are the misses. I took a photo in summer of a sailboat on Lake Michigan. We live a couple of houses away from the beach so this is one of our favourite places to go. The different kinds of boats and ships are endlessly fascinating. The colours of the water in the picture were in segments so this looked to be a good choice for the exercise. I agree. I did a test strip of the colours and their various densities and angles of fill. For the sky, I used a straight across and then put a little darker blue strip in with the Florentine effect. All the water has Florentine applied and I like the sense of movement from it. It does cause the programme to travel where it isn't in expected in order to fill in the, clip, the dips or build up outpatchings, but any travel lines seemed okay to my eye. The sails needed a little shadowing, but we Phil didn't seem to do it. I got those awful squares at the end of the line. That's when you need to go and uncheck travel on edge, because it will automatically apply travel on edge anything that's over 0.8. So I switched to doing a run line back and forth. I wish I had done two things differently there. If I had left the weave in place, I could have used it as a template for how far apart to make the lines, and I would also have changed the stitch length on the run line. I did edit it to change the stitch length to 4. Good. 
the new stretchiness tripped me up and I got a little too much of the sail on the mast. I also corrected that in the edit. Hope it works. Yeah, that new stretchiness setting. It bugs me because they took advice from commercial stitchers and commercial stitchers like to have enormous great overlaps. As a domestic digitizer, I don't like those enormous overlaps. I prefer to put my own in and I only like them to be about 1.5 mils maximum. I prefer them to be somewhere around 0.5 of a mil. So for the fabric, I used a kind of canvas and enough to make a pillow if it worked out. I wanted to frame the picture and so did first a layer of closed satin and then a motif of a rope that I made. Hope you like it. Carol G in W I. I don't know where W I is. That could be W1, which would be London W1. <laughs> it's a shame you don't live in London, Carol. <sighs> okay. Density and run on edge. Let's go and look at this one. That is the sky. Object details. Travel on edge. Right. Now we do get some horrific travel lines. And that's why we're getting the travel lines. Where's the end point? The end point is there with that. Still getting them. This is one of the problems with loose density fills. Where is the fill angle? I do not see it. Now there's no travel line. No travel line. I wonder if we can make that one travel on edge. Start point, end point. No travel line. So there are ways you can get rid of the travels, but that might not be the effect that you wanted. Let me just make certain that there is actually no travel on edge. No, there isn't. Cancel. So that gets rid of that harsh line that travel on edge creates. Also gets rid of the whippies. You may not have noticed, but on <coughs> my design that I uploaded, I didn't do a sky. <laughs> sky wasn't busy enough. There wasn't enough cloud. There wasn't enough interest in the sky in that particular picture for me to be able to bury travel lines. And they would have stood out like a sore thumb. Now, I think you see is perfect. I'm with you over the stretchiness allowance. I think they overdid it. Way overdid it. It's 0.6 adds 1.2 millimeters to the width of something, which is an awful lot. Now, I know there is a, a school of thought that says, if you're going to have a border, you have to take this out almost to the edge. Why? The way you had it, and I'm going to put it back now to the way you had it. I think that's about it. Yep. This is your area of pull here and here. This is your area of push and push. There's no gapping on yours in your photograph. So you don't need it to be out to the edge. I do like the fact that you've got in that little bit of C in between the sails. Oh, excuse me. And yes, your point about leaving the weave fill in to use as a template for hand drawing in to give you the shadow. That's a perfectly legitimate way of doing it. I'm going to actually check to see what density the sails were. Object details. Right. Cancel. And you get that ribbed look because you've got weave fill one. Can you see the checkerboard effect here? That's now gone. You've lost the checkerboard. It's also an easier weave fill to add a feathering to to give you shade. Unless, of course, you wanted that ribbed effect. And there it is. Now, one of the reasons I like loose density is because 
at this. The little flecks of your background fabric coming through. It all adds to the design. Yeah, I'd say you'd made a nice job of this, Carol. It's a shame we aren't on board this one. Okay, now I'm going to move on because I've been chinwagging enough and I love your rope. And it seems exactly the right motif to use for a seascape. <laughs> 